Lockheed Martin has secured a contract modification worth up to $1 billion to continue developing the conventional prompt strike, CPS, hypersonic weapon system. The project aims to equip Zumwalt class destroyers and eventually Virginia class submarines with rapid and highly precise strike capabilities without nuclear payloads. The approved funding covers various technical aspects such as program management, system engineering, technology integration, as well as procurement and production of specialized equipment. An initial $140 million will be drawn from the U.S. Army's research and development budget. The CPS program itself is a strategic collaboration between the U.S. Navy and Army to develop hypersonic missiles capable of traveling at speeds exceeding Mach 5. The system relies on a two-stage solid-fuel rocket motor from Northrop Grumman and a glide body manufactured by Dynetics. CPS is launched via a cold gas mechanism and controlled using thrust vectoring technology, making its trajectory difficult to predict and harder to intercept by defense systems. The weapon uses a non-explosive kinetic energy warhead designed to destroy targets accurately without causing widespread destructive effects. The program structure is divided into three phases. Since 2019, the initial phase has focused on prototype development and testing through the joint flight campaign from JFC-1 to JFC-5. Although some tests encountered challenges, corrective measures have been taken and further testing is planned for 2024. The next phase will integrate CPS into Zumwalt-class ships and the final phase will include full integration with Virginia-class submarines. The U.S. Army is also developing a land-based version of CPS through the Long Range Hypersonic Weapon, LRHW, or Dark Eagle program, which uses components similar to the sea-based version. Lockheed Martin is collaborating with a number of partners such as Northrop Grumman, Dynetics, General Dynamics, and contractors such as VTG and Expo Systems. In early 2022, tests of the Automatic Flight Termination Unit, AFTU, conducted in collaboration with General Atomics, yielded positive results for missile testing safety. Despite some delays, the project is still ongoing. In December 2024, HII reported that the USS Zumwalt had completed modifications at the Ingalls shipyard and was ready to have the CPS system installed. The first missile launch from the ship is expected to occur between 2027 and 2028. If successful, the CPS will become the first U.S. naval-based hypersonic weapon system with strategic implications, despite its conventional nature. The contract is scheduled to be completed by August 31, 2028. In a global context, the CPS missile will give the U.S. the ability to attack from various platforms with high speed and precision, strengthening the U.S. military's position in the advanced technology competition with China and Russia. This system represents a major shift in U.S. conventional attack strategy, focusing on speed, range, and accuracy without the need for nuclear weapons. The development of CPS is not only focused on its technological advantages, but also on strengthening the domestic defense industry supply chain. In this project, Lockheed Martin acts as the primary integrator coordinating various leading defense companies. Northrop Grumman is responsible for the two-stage solid-fuel rocket propulsion system, while Dynetics handles the development of the Common Hypersonic Glide Body, CHGB. Other contractors, such as General Dynamics Mission Systems, provide communication and command subsystems, while VTG is tasked with technical services and launch system integration. Expo Systems, a new player in the rocket motor sector, 
supplies critical components for all up rounds, AUR, which are the complete weapon units of the CPS system. One of the key tests was conducted at Wallops Island, Virginia in February 2022, where General Atomics successfully tested the Autonomous Flight Termination Units, AFTU, a critical system for ensuring safety during hypersonic weapon testing. This success demonstrates the industry's readiness to comprehensively support the development of next-generation weapon systems. The development of CPS comes amid increasing global security dynamics, particularly in the Indo-Pacific and Eastern Europe. Countries such as China and Russia have made significant progress in the field of hypersonic weapons, such as the DFZF and Avangard. The United States, through this program, seeks to close capability gaps and ensure strategic dominance in the domain of high-speed long-range missiles. Unlike traditional systems, CPS is designed for use in limited conflict scenarios or rapid deterrence without necessitating nuclear escalation. This characteristic grants Washington broader military flexibility in addressing critical situations across various operational theaters. Once deployed on Zumwalt-class destroyers, and Virginia-class submarines, the CPS system is expected to significantly alter the United States' offensive posture. With hypersonic speed and high accuracy, these missiles can strike strategic targets deep within enemy territory within minutes, even before the enemy's defense systems can respond. Looking ahead, CPS technology is also likely to be further developed for additional platforms including air-launched versions or launches from fixed bases in Allied territories. This paves the way for the United States to adopt a flexible and multipolar weapon deployment strategy in addressing increasingly complex global threats. On the technological side, adapting CPS to various platforms requires improvements to fire control systems maintenance logistics, and interoperability with joint command systems. The United States must also ensure that these systems can be operated safely and effectively in environments with high electromagnetic interference or cyber attacks. Although still in its early stages, this development direction reinforces the narrative that hypersonic weapons will become a key component of modern military power structures not only as strategic strike tools, but also as determinants of operational superiority in future conventional conflicts.